go. Hello and welcome to Breast Cancer Now's um, Facebook Live session. My name's Addy and I'm one of the nurses who works for the charity. I'm joined tonight by Kayla, who is one of our very loyal supporters and volunteers and has herself had uh, a breast cancer diagnosis. And um, so I will be asking Kayla uh, shortly to share her story. And also, as it's the first day of Breast Cancer Awareness Month, I will be, um, she'll be chatting about how she feels breast, breast awareness is very important to us and um, also why she became one of our volunteers. So um, just to say that uh, throughout the session and afterwards, you're very welcome to post any questions or comments and we'll answer them as soon as we can. That may be um, not until afterwards or tomorrow morning. So anyway, Kayla, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Um, and would you be able to share your story and what happened to you and, um, you know, why you why you joined us on at Breast Cancer Now? Yes, yeah, sure. Thanks for having me. Well, I, yeah, as I say, my name's Kayla. When I was 20 in 2005, I was diagnosed with breast cancer, which obviously being such a young age was a bit of a shock. Um, from that, I had a lumpectomy, chemotherapy, radiotherapy and five years of tamoxifen. I've had yearly checkups um, ever since, but unfortunately, again, when I was 31, in August 2016, I was diagnosed with breast cancer for a second time, a second primary, and it was in the opposite breast. Um, so I had to go through treatment again, um, and that was a few years ago now, but Thankfully, everything seems okay so far. Good. And what, what treatment? Did you have differing treatments when, from when you were 20 to when you were 31? Were they different treatments? It was basically the same. Um, the first, the second time around, I had chemotherapy first, and then I had a double mastectomy, and then I had radiotherapy. I didn't have any hormone treatment because it was triple neg negative the second time around. Okay, so it's a different, completely different type of cancer. Yes, than very, very different. Previously, okay, mm -hmm. so that means triple negative means it wasn't receptive to any of the hormone, mm -hmm. um, hormone, hormone receptors yeah. mm -hmm. that some cancers have. Mm -hmm. So um, that must have been quite a shock, and particularly, obviously, being twenty, mm -hmm. that's incredibly rare. So I need to say that to begin with, and you, you, as you've really discovered i'm sure you you realize that it's that it's very rare to get breast cancer in your 20s and 30s mm -hmm. and even 40s is is mm -hmm. much less common um it's much more common to get breast cancer when you're over 50 so that must have had quite an impact on you yeah it was very strange um when i was first diagnosed in my 20s it was my partner that found the lump because i was so young um, checking my breasts was never even a thing that would have came into my mind because you wouldn't have think it would happen so young. Um, no. But when I must say when the lumps were found, it was the first thing that came into my mind. So you are aware of it, but you just you wouldn't think it would happen as young. And it was no. quite hard being in your twenties and going through chemotherapy and having surgery because your friends you don't know anybody that's doing that. In your twenties you've gone out, you're having fun, you're not really caring about life much, you're just enjoying yourself. So it's pretty difficult in your 20s. It's, I think you experience it a lot different than anyone that's older. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. no, I'm sure. And um, and so you were saying that you both times that you found the lumps yourself, is that correct? Yeah, first time my partner, second time, even though I had my yearly checkups, it was myself that found the second time around. And it wasn't even when I was checking, it was just by chance one day I noticed there was a difference. Right. And so um, so breast awareness clearly is uh, very mm -hmm. important to you. Um, mm -hmm. And so why did you become one of our supporters? I'm glad, very glad you did. Because <laughs> oh, obviously having you. somebody young, you know, is... When I was first diagnosed, I used, I think I used every service from what well, was Breast Cancer Care at the time that was going. Um, obviously, it's a lot different back then. It was more on the phone, helpline groups and things that we had. But I yeah. used every service that I could um, and always felt I just want to give something back because yeah. the charity helped me through so much. Second time around, they helped as well. 
Um, but because I'd volunteered in most of the roles, I couldn't get a lot of benefit from it because I already knew all the help that I could get. But yes. like someone like me service, I used that definite and that really yeah. did help. But I just wanted to give back from what I got from it because it's just an amazing charity to have because yeah. no one understands what you're going through unless you've been through it. And when I was first diagnosed, hearing someone's story, I know how much that impacted me when you know they go through the other side. Yes. And I know by me telling my story that it does impact other people and make them feel like they could do it as well. Absolutely, which is why it's brilliant you've joined us tonight, mm -hmm. you know, because I think, uh, you know, and obviously um, being breast, breast Cancer Awareness Month, I think it's even more, I mean, it's not just for this month, of course, but checking it's really important, isn't it, mm -hmm. for um, every every everybody to check. Uh, men also get breast cancer, but mm -hmm. less commonly. But men, men and women to check um, regularly, so that you know what's normal for you, you, mm -hmm. so that you know that if there's anything new, like a, a lump or a thickening in the armpit area or in the breast or chest area, up to the collarbone, um, um, or a puckering, a dimpling. Mm -hmm change in the skin texture um you know you should always report them even if you're not sure it should mm -hmm. always be reported to your gp mm -hmm. um and you you were saying that you were followed up uh yeah. because of mm -hmm. your young age you were yeah. being followed up even though you found the second love yourself mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. so that was quite important too so how what was the follow-up for you before you found the the second the the, the second primary cancer my, uh, the first time I was uh, obviously diagnosed, it was a lumpectomy I had, so obviously it's just taking a small lump away, so I still had my breasts at that point. So my checkup I had every year, I saw my breast care nurse at the hospital and I had an ultrasound scan. Because of my age, I was too young for mammograms, they didn't mm -hmm. think they would get a proper reading from it, so it was an ultrasound scan I would have every year. Okay. And I had that every year for the whole yep. 10, 11 years before I was diagnosed again. Okay, so you, yes, being young, you probably have very dense breast tissue, I imagine, that's glandular when you're, uh, and, and looks quite sort of um, white on a mammogram, so it's actually easier to do other methods such as an ultrasound sometimes if uh, if you are, you know, if you have got dense breast tissue, so um, unless when you, whenever anybody finds a lump, um, they should obviously go and check it out with their GP. At the moment, it might be a phone appointment. Mm -hmm. They might want to see you in the clinic and um, they may decide that you need to go to a breast clinic to be um, to be examined and have it checked out properly with a you know, mammogram and or an ultrasound. So, um, but there's, you know, they may not do a mammogram if you are under, an age, mm -hmm. under the age of 35, for instance, if they're not, not concerned about the lump. Mm -hmm. um, so what would you say to women who, uh, you know, who find a lump and, you know, who um, aren't sure what to do? Yeah, definitely go and get checked. I remember the first time I was, before I was diagnosed, when I found the lumps, I was terrified. Everyone is terrified. It's really scary because you don't know, especially if you don't know that type of life or that type of world you just you yeah. haven't got a clue what's going to come or what's going to happen but yeah best get checked because obviously the earlier it's caught the easier it is to treat and yeah, even though that... treatment and everything it's not nice it's horrible at times but you do get through it and it is temporary so definitely get checked it's you can save your life yeah yeah mm -hmm. that's right and um did you find that the did you key into the younger women's um, younger women together groups or the Facebook younger women's groups? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Breast cancer yeah. groups. Did you mm -hmm. did you manage to find that support out there? Because it, obviously yeah. it is out there, but um, yeah, more second time around than first time because I think because it was 2005 the first time I was diagnosed, there wasn't as much help. Um, for your mental health. I found mm -hmm. there was more, 10 years later, more help for mental health. At the Facebook group, um, Young and Women's group, I helped me a lot during the second yeah. time for the three in the morning when you can't sleep, you need somebody to just reassure that everything's okay. 
yeah. first time around, I, um, yeah, I went to the younger women's together, and in the Scotland one, I volunteered at that for about six or seven years as well. That's which fantastic. Was one of my actual favourite things that I've ever done and love to do. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's brilliant. I mean, unfortunately, because due to the pandemic, mm -hmm. uh, you know, as you probably know, I'm sure the Young Women Together groups have been um, stopped for now. I mean, hopefully they will be starting up again because I know, you know, um, our colleagues who help run those courses are just, they're invaluable for younger women yeah. because, they are, mm -hmm. you know, you are a niche group. Mm -hmm. It's a smaller group, obviously, because, as we say, you know, you know, breast cancer is much more common in women over 50 of the age of 50 and your your needs are slightly differently so um mm -hmm. and, and certainly with things such as fertility um i know you've you've mm -hmm. had a little girl haven't you so yeah. mm -hmm. which is fantastic and that's uh since your first diagnosis wasn't it yeah i was diagnosed 2005 and 2014 we had a little girl and she's now six mm -hmm. that's great so that's mm -hmm. that's great because i think it just gives hope for women mm -hmm. out there who you know also you know um want to go down that route as well mm -hmm. and you know it may not happen for everyone but i think it's uh it's important to say that that you know there mm -hmm. may be there may be a possibility of that happening so that's great and, um yeah so um and i i was going to say that um obviously there's there's someone like me who's obviously really important mm -hmm. um there's a lot of resources on our website that have the signs and symptoms mm -hmm. on there. And uh, you can also email the nurses mm -hmm. um, anytime. So our helpline opens tomorrow at nine. Um, and like we say, it's just as simple as touch, look and check. So just feel for the breast tissues, feel if it's any different, feel for lumps and bumps, but it's not just lumps. It's about uh, different changes in texture, mm -hmm. dimpling, pulling in, maybe the nipples can't become inverted, drawn in. Um, it might be a nipple discharge or a change in the look of the appearance of the nipple, like some crusting or um, dryness or rash. Um, and all those list of signs and symptoms are on our website. Um, so touch, look and check. I mean, that, that's the main thing. Maybe look in the mirror. There's no there's no um, you know there's no uh, hard and fast rules about how to do it. it if you're showered if you're in the shower relaxing um, you can check um, you might be able to stand in the in front of the mirror so you can see uh, the symmetry of both breasts mm -hmm. if you, and then check check it out always go if you're unsure always go and uh, contact your GP I think that's the that's the main message so um and so um I, I hope you'll continue to be uh, you know at supporting us and a bit volunteer mm -hmm. for us because i think it's like we say it's invaluable um support to have these loyal loyal supporters so um so thank you so much for joining us tonight You're kayla welcome. and uh yes do post uh any questions you have and we will endeavor to answer those and um, yes, thank you for listening. Thank you. Thank you.